Hello everyone and welcome to my uh, YouTube page here. Uh, this is the video update for April 4th, 2013. First thing I'd like to say is uh, I want to say a big thanks to everybody that's uh, viewed the, the previous video. And I want to say uh, thanks also to everyone that's uh, subscribed on that video. Um, there's been a lot of great comments left, uh, good information shared, and things like that. And I really do appreciate it. There's been a lot of good theories and a lot of good speculation, a lot of good comments. People that obviously uh, have heard um, some of the same things that I've uh, heard too. So the uh, that's that's pretty good to know. That's kind of the intent of that video uh, was to get people talking about this and maybe share some information that they know and some thoughts and healthy skepticism is always good. You know, I try to answer people's questions and comments and stuff like that that I feel like I can. Um, I didn't get to quite everybody, but there's been a lot of stuff to, that's been said. So, information-wise, I uh, did talk to my source again, and uh, he did confirm once again that as far as he knows, that the deal was done for the big boy. Based on some of the comments, uh, one comment uh, was that was left said that he talked to some of the people at Cremona and that they told him that there were still some legal issues they were working out. Uh, I think that's part of the. I think that's part of the, the thing. I mean, there's a lot of other red tape that got to go to scheduling, and they're going to make a big old PR thing of this because it's a big deal. Um, and for anyone that says that the big boy can't run, they're not going to do it because of X, Y, Z reasons. That's it, common sense tells me that's not the case because. They would never have even gone through the trouble of evaluating the locomotives if they weren't serious about restoring it, using it, and if they didn't think they could get any kind of benefit whatsoever. It was over budget. They, they didn't want to spend that kind of money to do it whatsoever. They know what they can run and they can't run. They know what kind of benefit they can get from this. And, and PR, public relations, and... Um, Brand recognition is very important. Historical value is very important to Union Pacific also. Anything can still happen. I have no way of knowing what things could be lurking still that's keeping this from happening right now. I don't know. There's a lot of things that Union Pacific still has to do that I can imagine anyway. They have to get equipment up there if they're going to move it themselves to the rail or whether they're going to hire someone or if they're going to build temporary track or a combination of the two. I don't know. But they have to get, if they hire somebody, they have to get them scheduled and work around their timetable and things like that. I do know that they're serious about this, and, and, if, and, if, and if Union Pacific was not serious about this, they would never have contacted Pomona. They would never have even gone through the trouble of evaluating it because they evaluated all this stuff in the 90s, and they, they decided then it wasn't feasible. It wasn't beneficial enough for them to invest millions of dollars to run this. But the, the major funding is not coming from Union Pacific, although Union Pacific is going to reap the benefits of this uh, restoration. One thing I did get recently was that someone said that it still remains to be seen whether or not Union Pacific is going to make this um, a rolling monument or an actual functioning locomotive. And that is kind of an interesting point that I had not considered as a rolling monument, or rolling exhibit, I should say. Um, that is interesting. However, I can say that uh, you know, if you look at the, his the 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 chain of events that occurred in the '60s, which is on Rail Giant's website, you can see when they started moving it and how what date it was here and there and how long. Basically, it took them a week going 25 miles with that locomotive. And this was back when that big boy was still fairly new compared to what it is now, and they only went 25 miles an hour with it. I don't know. I don't think that. And I could be wrong with this. I don't think they'd want to be pushing that thing 60, 70 miles an hour for a rolling exhibit. I, I don't know. That doesn't that doesn't quite make sense to me. I also don't think that that would be the case because they could pretty much use any of the big boys, and the ones that they've evaluated are the ones that have the best chance of being restored to functionality. Uh, so I, 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 I mean, they could use, I mean, the one in Nebraska is visually in pretty good shape. The one in Denver is visually, looks, looks great visually. I mean, visually, that's all they would really need to care about if they could get the thing rolling. You know, that's obviously another issue, but I don't know that they'd want to be pushing that thing at 60, 70 miles an hour. I don't know. 
I, I don't know about that, but... Um, which brings me to another topic I want to talk about. There was a comment that was left about some of the trade that had happened. Uh, I'm going to put a photo up right now. This is the Arden. And he had said that the Arden, along with two coaches and a caboose, were part of the deal. Now, I know that the steam shop, steam crew, steam team, however you want to classify them, owns all that equipment at UP as far as the steam engines go, the equipment around the, that's stored right now around the roundhouse and things like that. So they already had all the stuff in their possession. They also take care of the excursion fleet. I think they own the excursion fleet, but I might be wrong about that. So I was able to confirm with my source that yes, the Arden was part of that trade. However, I was not able to get any confirmation on the other three. Since he had the first one right, I'm assuming the, the other three are probably very likely also. I'm going to put a photo on the screen right now. And this is an email that was sent out by the Historical Society back in December showing the flute time and machinery time that was left on the big boys when they were put out to pasture, sent out to uh, where they're at now. And it shows that the uh, flu time on the Texas uh, big boy was a little bit better. Machinery time was a tad bit worse than the one in Pomona. And Union Pacific had considered the, um, or the steam team, I should say, one of the two, had evaluated all these and decided the one in Texas was their number one choice. And the Pomona one was actually the number two choice. Uh, I have some theory, a couple theories about why maybe they chose the one in Pomona. First theory I have is is the rule of thumb that works always, that always works good for me is follow the money. Um, this investor is giving a lot of money to uh, Union Pacific uh, to, to fund the big boy is uh, um, located in California, and this is probably the locomotive that he saw uh, over a course of time. And anybody that sees these big boys, they all, you know, a lot of people say, "Well, I want to see this one restored or that one restored," things like that, it's because it's the one that's closest to their heart. That's the one they see. That's the one that they're you know, in, in love with, so to speak. Um, so I think follow the money on that, and I and I think that that's probably the reason why. Also, that locomotive was a labor of love, and it's probably and it has had of all of them, it's had the most care done to it over the years, as far as maintenance goes, greasing of the bearings, lubrication of parts, things like that. So maybe Union Pacific decided that maybe it was the the most likely candidate to actually make it back in one piece. I'm not really sure. I like um, what, one of the things I was told about this is how this is going to happen is I they're going to obviously have to have some some of the steam crew up and promoted uh, when they're bringing this back. They have to have the, the equipment cars and they're probably going to have to have the caboose with them, things like that. Back because they're probably not going to want to push that thing more than 25 miles an hour. And it might they probably will go less. And they're also going to have to stop about every hundred miles or so to grease the bearings on that locomotive because uh, they don't want to leave any parts behind along the way. And then once they get to Laramie, Wyoming, um, they're going to already have had a passenger car pulled up from Omaha to Laramie, which is then going to meet uh, the big boy. And I don't know what arrangement this is going to be in. Uh, probably going to be off the back of the, the big boy. And then the whole thing is going to be pushed into Cheyenne. At least that's what I'm hearing, so um, I don't know why it's not coming out in the mainstream yet on this stuff. Um, I, you know, I, get the, I get the impression from people, though, that this is kind of a big hush-hush thing, and I don't want to give out too many details. So, um, you know, like I said before, I can't sit here and say, well, this information is go here, look at this website. I believe he's a good source. <clears throat> that doesn't mean that all this stuff is in, going to end up happening but this is what I'm hearing right now is is the plan and what's been done so far. This is what I'm hearing. So this could all still fall apart. We don't know until it until it's actually back in Cheyenne. I'm just trying to be nice and let everybody know because there's a void of information about this. And you know, I don't have all the details. I don't have all, all the information. I don't, I don't have any timetable on when this is going to happen. I wasn't able to get that. Um, but I think it's going to, I mean, it should, I, I, I'm guessing it should happen fairly soon, hopefully within the next two or three months. I would like to see it sooner than that. I mean, I'd like to know who the investor is. I'd like to know how they're going to do this. I'd like to know when they're going to do this. I mean, I want to know all this stuff too. But until it actually starts happening, all this stuff is, is hearsay that I'm hearing. But then again, everything else on the internet was hearsay too. And it was one source that was duplicated 15 times. And 
Some people think that if the same information is duplicated 15 times, that somehow that makes it more relevant than what somebody else says. So, you know, and obviously the people that have subscribed realize that, that, that I'm probably a pretty good source. And I really do appreciate that again. So, um, <clears throat> this is going to end this video. I'm sorry that these are, that this is a little bit long, but there's a lot of things I wanted to talk about. And <clears throat> I wanted to get some of this stuff out and, and uh, try to get all my ducks in a row on this. So, take care everyone. Peace out.